The OP stack is a phrase that's been thrown around a lot recently, and even more so with the announcement of BASE, the second major chain to be built using the OP stack. The OP stack has the potential to be the predominant technology on which the majority of blockchains are built in the future. But what exactly is it? By the end of this video, you're going to understand not just what the OP stack is in detail, but also why the OP stack is so important to us achieving a decentralized future. Some of the concepts in this video may be difficult to understand if it's your first time hearing them. I encourage you to really try your best to make it to the end of the video even if you don't understand everything. The more times you hear each of these concepts, the more likely it is to stick in your head until you eventually get it. I'll also link the OP stack docs down below, which is a good place to dive a little bit deeper. At its core, the OP stack is a set of technologies that powers the optimism and now the base blockchain networks. It is called a stack because there are many different layers of software needed to run the many parts of a complete blockchain. The OP stack breaks the technology for each of these layers down into modules, which can be combined together in a modular way in order to create a complete layer two blockchain. Altogether, the OP stack was designed to make it easy to build, modify, and upgrade layer two blockchains. It's helpful to think of a real world example of a team building a layer two blockchain. If you wanted to build a layer two blockchain today, you'd have two options. First, you could use the current state of the art in crypto research to raise some money, bring together some talented developers and build your own proprietary blockchain. While this might take a lot of work, eventually you'll probably be left with a pretty good blockchain that might even be best in class. But as crypto technology continues to advance, you'll need your own developers with specialized knowledge of your chain to write a lot of code in order to upgrade your network. Because the technology will never stop advancing, your code base is likely to get bigger and bigger and that code is likely to be more and more specific. New developers that want to contribute to your chain will have to work harder and harder in order to fully understand the code base and make changes. As complexity grows, bugs in this system will become more and more likely. Alternatively, you could build your layer two using the OP stack. The code base for the OP stack is already very similar to the code base for Ethereum. So any experienced Ethereum developer will be able to jump in and start working on your project. Because there is a set of modular components for each layer in the OP stack, you can pick each of these components and combine them together to form the perfect layer two network for your use case. As crypto technology advances, you may need to switch out some of these modules for newer ones. But the good news is, is that there will likely be a whole community of OP stack developers they're constantly taking the state of the art of the technology and incorporating them into new modules. Because your OP stack based layer two is modular, you can take these newer advanced components and switch it out for your existing components without having to change your entire code base. If you ever need anything specific to your network, you can have your developers focus on that specific module without needing to constantly worry about every single layer of the stack. Because the OP stack is shared by an entire community of developers and chains, each modular component is scrutinized and battle tested, which minimizes the possibilities of bugs or exploits. Obviously, the OP stack seems like the better option for any new chains coming onto the scene. And it's why Coinbase decided that they would launch their network base using the OP stack. In fact, as part of their announcement, Coinbase made it clear that their engineers would be joining Optimism's engineers as the second group of core developers for the OP stack, which means that there are now two world-class teams pushing this thing forward. So what are these actual layers and modules that we keep talking about? Let's dive a little bit further into them. The main layers that are currently defined in the OP stack from top to bottom are the governance, settlement, execution, derivation, sequencing, and data availability layers. In its current form, the modules for each of these layers in the OP stack are the modules that exist as a part of Bedrock, which is Optimism's most recent major upgrade. However, each layer has a handful of potential modules that are either active works in progress or generally accepted as a potential upgrade in the future. To start, the data availability layer is a layer at the bottom of the stack. This is where the data that is the raw input to the OP stack chain is stored. And it's the cost of this data storage, which is actually the biggest contributor to fees on L2 right now. Currently, the data is stored on Ethereum mainnet and the module available to the OP stack 
is the Ethereum data availability. But with the OP stack, it's possible that somebody could create a new module that uses a different chain to store this raw input data. OP stack chains are also able to use multiple data availability modules if they'd like. The sequencing layer of the OP stack defines how transactions are collected and published into the data availability layer. Currently in the OP stack, there is a dedicated actor that runs a single sequencer which is optimism itself. However, in the future, it will be possible to have many sequencers running. The module in the sequencing layer would be defining when and how each potential sequencer is picked from that set. The derivation layer is the connector between the raw data on the data availability layer, aka Ethereum, and the execution layer, aka the L2 chain. The derivation layer defines how this raw data is parsed and processed. For example, if the data in the data availability layer is compressed, the derivation layer would define how to decompress it for use in the execution layer. The derivation module can actually use data from the execution layer to define how it does this processing. The current module available for the derivation layer is the rollup module. However, there is a proposed module for the future called the indexer module. The next layer is the execution layer. You may have already heard about the execution layer on Ethereum and the OP stack also has an execution layer. This is the layer that defines how to make changes to the blockchain's state. The current module available for this layer is the EVM module. EVM is the Ethereum virtual machine. The Ethereum virtual machine is the same EVM that is used across a lot of different blockchains in order to define how to make changes to the state. Modification to this execution layer has a lot of potential for customization. For example, there is a project called OPCraft which switched out the execution layer for a simulation of Minecraft. The entire state of the game was stored on chain, but any changes to that state, like gaining experience or crafting something, was handled by the actual game's code in the execution layer. The settlement layer is the layer that allows external chains to view the current state of the OP chain in question. Each OP stock chain could have one or more settlement mechanisms mapping to one or more external chains. These mechanisms are read-only, meaning that the external chains cannot alter anything in the state of the chain, but can only view it. It's called the settlement layer because this layer's mechanisms are often what's used to handle withdrawals out of the chain. The settlement layer is the layer of the stack where fault proofs exist. The current available module in the OP stack is for attestation based fault proofs. In attestation based fault proofs, a proposer proposes a current state for the OP stack chain. There is then a challenge period where anyone can challenge this proposal. If no challenges are made within that period, the proposal is assumed to be correct. There are currently two more proposed modules for this layer. The first is the fault proof optimistic settlement module. It's very similar to the attestation based module that we have today, but decentralize the current challenger process into a permissionless process. The second is the validity proof settlement module, which instead of using a challenge period and challenges, uses a mathematical proof to guarantee the state of the OP stack chain. And last but not least, we have the governance layer of the OP stack. The governance layer is probably the least well-defined of any of the existing layers, but it's also one of the most important. This is where upgrades to the protocol can be handled, but also where decisions like retroactive public goods funding and community grants are made. Currently, Optimism uses a multi-state contract in order to handle upgrades to the network in conjunction with votes from token holders. But this is rapidly progressing and Optimism actually has a really unique two house governance system, which I made a whole video about if you want to learn more. As more and more OP stack chains are created, they become what Optimism is calling a super chain with increased interoperability and horizontal scaling. Instead of every individual blockchain innovating and developing in their own silo, we'll have a whole big group of chains and developers innovating together. This super chain could really be the future of blockchains as we know it. If you want to learn more about any of the topics I discussed, like the base blockchain, Optimism's Bedrock upgrade, Optimism itself, or EIP 4844, Check out the description for links to those videos. Thanks for watching, stay optimistic, and I'll see you in the next video.